start from the recognition that there's only reality, only life, pick a word that resonates, and that you can't get out of reality. There's only life. Everything you're experiencing is an expression of life. Really what you are after, what you are desiring, pursuing, and attempting to return back to is life, is reality, is home, the truth of what you are. That is this, that is you, that is all things. The journey becomes the destination. This is the fabric of reality. Your present experience is a shape cut from the one material, the one fabric of reality. Everywhere you go, whatever you experience, you are there, you are what you are. You are the absolute. Even though you seem to experience relativity and contrast and duality, those are experiences, are particular shapes that are fully reality, fully life, fully what you are. So this is not about changing anything. This is about discerning the actual nature, the essence of things. By that I mean, what's the universe made of? What's the world made of? What are objects made of? What is this body? What is this ego thing that I think I am? What is this collection of stuff that make up what I believe I am? The thoughts and the feelings and the emotions and memories and the desires and fears that I seem to be so wrapped up in. What is it all made of? in reality, in truth? Well, that is the answer. Reality, truth. This is not something you achieve. This is not something you cultivate. It's more like it's a recognition because you are reality and you're experiencing a different version of yourself. But ultimately, it's the clear seeing, it's the recognition of truth, the remembering of who you really are, what this really is. It's not about changing experience, it's about discerning what experience actually is. All things are cut from the fabric of reality. Now what that is can't be put into words, it can't be comprehended, it can't be interpreted. You don't have to change. You can change, but it doesn't really get you anywhere because you're always here and you're always what you are anyway. Yes, growth and change and development, cultivation of certain qualities are all relatively meaningful and helpful and conducive to the clear seeing and remembering but ultimately this is about being who you are and recognizing that you can't not be who you are yeah that's the bottom line isn't it you start with well what's actually here right now what's actually true here and you can't answer it you know feel into the fabric feel into the texture of what's here you not answering it as as you would an answer to a question you are answering it by the fact of being the fact that you are no matter what how it's appearing you can't not be who you are this is really what it's about is what can you know for sure like just this raw interpretation free empirical view how are we conscious how is this happening how is there anything how is there even just this perceptive mode of being but the qualities of your experience may be heavy may be difficult may be emotionally challenging and it may seem like you can't see through that fog of just total ignorance and delusion and difficulty and emotional challenge and all the chaos of the life that you're living but it's always there it is always there you can you can it, the opportunity is there to feel into it it's more this what this does i feel is like it melts the snowball like a little bit at a time every time you see clearly it's just for five seconds just feeling into what's here now just seeing it what's here now without veering off into interpretations every time you do that for a minute five seconds five minutes whatever for an hour what it doesn't matter you're melting that snowball those habitual tendencies you're creating a new it's in a sense creating a new habit a new habit the habit of truth to truth of reality to reality as opposed to reality to delusion i'm going to look now i'm going to make a purposeful effort to look at my experience and, and inquire into it and explore it 
And at some point, it seems that it's actually doing itself. And so you can kind of t just take your hands off, hands off the wheel and just go, right, oh, actually it's doing itself. Now I can just subtly notice if that's even necessary, subtly notice what's here. It's more of like a subtle, like just a kind of recognition, very subtle, effortless. So the bottom line really is that this can never not be what you are, no matter how it appears. It can never be other than what you are. It just appears in lots of different ways. It has an absolute infinite range. It has an infinite palette of how it can appear. You know, the more you feel into it, the more you can start to feel that this is, no matter what's appearing, that, that reality is absolutely always itself. And there's a there's a kind of safety about that. There's a homeliness about that. It kind of appears like it's sort of lost in its own dream at times, like it's really entered into the deep exploration of itself and forgotten itself altogether. But even in those places, it's got nothing, <laughs> nothing outside of itself to build with. You're listening to the Non-Duality Podcast. This is Nick Hyam from nisagayoga.com and here with me is Paul Dobson. This is it. You are what you seek. And I know you've heard that a thousand times. Maybe it resonates, but you can't quite work it out because how on earth can I be what I seek when I seem to be so limited and contracted and small and lost and wrapped up in desire and fear, suffering, limitation, seeking things that I feel will complete me, will fulfill me. How on earth can I be what I seek? I seek, for example, I seek freedom. How can I be freedom when I don't feel free? It doesn't make any sense. It's not logical. You would be right. It's not logical. You believe you are limited that way, defined that way. And what we're saying is, look beyond your definitions. And I'm not saying bypass those definitions. I'm saying go deeply into, engage intimately and sensitively with what you're defining. This body seems to be you. You're defining yourself that way. Go into the felt sense of this body. Feel it sensitively, energetically, and you will feel beneath the labels, you will feel the fabric of reality. Um, here's a quote by Peter Ralston. He says, What actually prevents our understanding isn't some missing ingredient in our being, or even the vast complexity of the matter itself. The reason we cannot discern the true nature of reality is that the purpose for our experience keeps us constantly focused elsewhere. The dynamics that allow us to manage life so well also serve another function. They obscure any consciousness of what's actually true. Where there is fixation, there is identification. Whatever you focus on excessively, you become or you seem to become. You don't really become anything. You are awareness and you are simply placing your attention on various shapes, various experiences, and then you seem to be limited that way. There's no missing ingredient. There's only one ingredient and that is your being. Nothing is missing. Nothing is out of place because everything has a place because of its very presence. The arising of an experience is also its acceptance. And I don't mean your acceptance as an individual. I mean your acceptance as life. So acceptance is automatic because you are consenting to what's here because what's here is a creation out of yourself, the one fabric. The reason you can't discern that fabric is because you are constantly focusing on a, a particular shape that you've cut from that fabric. And it helps to relax, soften your focus, soften your attention, relax your concepts, relax in every possible way. And 
you're so used to thinking, there's nothing wrong with it, but that's a mode of exploration you're already acquainted with. So now feel what's here on an energetic level. Don't be concerned with how you're feeling or what it is that you're feeling. Only feel, feeling into what's here right now and you will discern the fabric of reality. Yeah, when you do that, you're kind of like, and I'm sure we've quoted this before, but it's like um, Jesus says, be like little children to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Be like a baby that hasn't got a clue what's happening, but it knows it exists, you know, not intellectually, doesn't need to think about it, but it is, it just is. And it's that kind of sense into which, I'd say is a, a good way of feeling into your experience, just totally with total innocence, total rawness, total freshness. It's like, it's a, it's a very, it's a very sensitive thing. And you actually seem to, the sensitivity is already, already there, but it's like by doing this, it's like it teaches you by doing it. It's like it teaches itself. You as reality are teaching yourself by doing it. It's like teaching itself to be more sensitive with itself more and more. That's how it's felt in my experience, at least. I can't say that as an ultimate fact. But in my experience, it's like I feel like by just being with it over and over again, sensitively and directly, nakedly, in that direct sensory way you were speaking about, raw, interpretation-free, sensory level, you kind of le- you find new layers almost of sensitivity to it. It's like you start with some something that you can start with is like the fact. Well, I'm real. You don't you don't need to like conceptualize that. You don't need to like think about it. It's just like I am real. Like this, whatever it is, this is really happening. You can feel this is happening. You don't need to think about, well, this philosophically, it could be or it couldn't be. No, just just stay with the direct energetic presence of this. You can feel this is real. It's real. And therefore, you must be real. Not saying that the person and your ideas about the person are ultimately real in the way that you interpret the ideas, like your fantasies about the person, they not may might not be real. But this aliveness this presence here is real this it's in in uh, unarguable fact you, you can just otherwise you wouldn't be hearing these words they would not be perceived in any way there would be a vacuum talking to a vacuum and nothing would ever go in because there's no presence or consciousness there so these words are being heard <laughs> what is that that's hearing these words like how is that happening What the hell is that? Like, really? We so quickly go to, oh, it's this and this, and I learned this at school, and um, it's, you know, vibrations of sound bouncing around, which hit hit my eardrum and blah, blah, blah. And I don't know the actual process, but it's something along those lines. And then the brain interprets it, and we have all of that information, you could say, and then the assumption that there's something outside of ourselves which is making the sound. And then we're the ones perceiving it from in here. But if you go directly with like sound, just using sound for an example now, directly with sound, what the hell is sound? I mean, really, when you're absolutely directly with it at the cutting edge of the sensation itself, of the texture itself, of the presence of it itself, without any interpretations going to any reference points you might have about what you've learned about sound and even taking away the word sound wordless just this presence what is it you can't you can't literally can't say what that is you know it is though you know it is and you can't separate yourself from it it is what you are which is like you could say pure pure intelligence pure sentience it's alive. I don't know what sound is. <laughs> you know, um, we so we so we assume we know what these things are. I know what sound is because I am one with sound. I I am directly feeling into sound. My intelligence, my pure intelligence as what I am, is recognizing the intelligence of sound. And that it's not because it's not separate from it. It is one and the same. 
So I know what it is on that level. It's not a it's not a, an intellectual understanding. It's not a philosophical understanding. It's not a scientific understanding. It is just a recognition of it as myself. It's a knowing. Um, it's same with sight. When I really look at sight, without allowing my mind to tell me what it is, you know, just being with the direct presence again, the presence of sight, it's something else. It's like it's not what we thought it was. I'm feeling it in the same way I feel hearing. I'm feeling it in the same way I feel tasting uh, or touching. I'm feeling it, sight. It's a sense. And also in the same way that I couldn't separate what I heard from a hearer of it or from an object that is causing the sounds. Like it's the same with sight. I can't separate what I'm seeing from what's seeing it. It is one flow, one continuum. When I'm really investigating it, I mean, not as an idea, not as those ideas that I've just labelled out, but I mean when I'm really directly investigating it sensitively and I'm just... Because the mind is bubbling. You can feel the mind while you do this bubbling up inside. It's like it's like you're leaving it on a hot stove and you're telling it, don't, don't boil over for a second. And it's boiling up and it really wants to bubble over and give you some answers. It's just got, it's got answers bursting, ready to go. But the answers that mind can never answer, the mind can never possibly answer what these, what this, I say these things are, but this presence is. In all, this presence is, an explosion of energy in all directions, in all frequencies. And it is never separated from what you are. Because you, you, you are you are it. You and it are the one and the same flow, the, the continuum of this presence. So we can never come up, actually come up with a definitive interpretation because nothing ever hangs around. It's all thought-like. It's all disappearing as it's arising. It's an open-ended infinity. Yeah. Every appearance, every experience is transient. Tra transitory nature of appearance is built into what this is, built into reality. So even this idea of having to let go makes no sense because everything is released. Every experience is already released. That's why you can't come up with any conclusion because everything is already um, coming and going and you can't capture anything to, to say, well, this is what it is. Experience is shape-shifting always. So that's liberation right there, isn't it? And yet thrown into this, there's this transitory thought that says something like, oh, this is my life and this is who I am and this is my lot. I'm restricted this way. This is my life and... This is who I am, and this is all I am. I'm not the trees, I'm not you, I'm not this chair, I'm not, I'm not God. <laughs> and that's really painful. But even that thought, even that experience is short-lived. You don't even need to become free. You don't even need to become liberated because you are already free. As life, you are free because nothing sticks to you. No experience remains. There are all sorts of ways of um, dropping your false ideas like meditation and so on. But actually, first of all, all ideas are false. <laughs> so if you are to ask which ideas are false, well, all ideas are false. That's one fact. The other fact is all ideas are dropped. <laughs> you, reality, drop all false ideas. Every experience is false in so much as um, no experience can characterise the entirety. You know, I think of the blind men and the elephant's parable. The experience of the elephant's ear cannot capture the entirety of the elephant. And it's a bit like that. So if you are to ask, who am I? Then actually the answer is not to be found in any particular shape. But to fixate on any expression of what I am is to be limited and therefore suffer by means of seeking an aversion. This is from Das Bode. When one investigates into what is this I, I am that is the answer. And one sees only the self. How can any separate I exist there? Well, there's no true 
separate eye, but this self seems to manifest various identities which are born from fixation. There is only one non-thing that happens to be existing, which you can know for sure, and that's the fact you are. I know we keep going back to this point. I don't mean you as the body. I mean you as the fact you're even aware that there's a body, that there's any perceptive quality at all, that there's any sentience whatsoever, There's some that there's something we can hear, words, see sights, smell. That there's something that can even like interpret things in any way that <laughs> that's that's the only thing you can know for sure if you stay with that it's it becomes it's like you're like tuning yourself into a true true perception it's like you're tu- everything else becomes tuned in a way into true perception it's like your body I, I i sort of invite anyone to see see how this is for them but for me my body relaxes when i and with this more directly because it's it's like all the tensions in my body are tensions of misinterpretation it's a tension of past and future it's a tension of worry which can only be misinterpretation because they don't exist now as this actuality so it's like all of those little tensions are like little knots where i'm veering off into an interpretation of something that is not present ultimately it's like either an idea about the past but i can't find that here if i really look here what is my body what what is this sight you can be with anything your ideas about the past your memories your ideas about the future you can be with the events of its initial kind of conception into being almost because it is being it's being kind of bubbling itself like through like it's like shining a light through a bubble and it light mirroring everywhere and it kind of you can then choose another choose another kind of veer off point from that light <laughs> but it's it's like um that's kind of how these interpretations are but so the nearer you get to the source the quote unquote source of it all the more it's easier to see that that's nonsense exactly in that vagueness there's a kind of relaxation isn't there there's a sort of softening as opposed to the contracted point of view. Reality is choosing points of focus. That's what it's doing. It it creates points of focus and then it becomes interested in particular points of focus and seems to identify itself with them. It's nothing personal, but in another way, it's, it's, it's deeply personal because there's only the one self, there's only reality. So it's all personal but it's not personal in the egoic way. You intuit that central ontological fact of your nature. This fact has empirical obviousness. It's always there. You're just shape-shifting in different ways and giving your attention to those different ways of presenting yourself. That's not a mistake because it's happening. It's not a problem because that's what seems to be unfolding. So you you don't have to try to get to clarity only, for example, as a quality of what you are. You don't have to get to a clear seeing and, and then sort of maintain that. It seems that once you have enough clarity and discernment, then every experience is recognized to only consist of that fact that truth, the fabric of reality. This is a quote by Richard Sylvester. He says, oneness is distracting itself from noticing that it is not to. <laughs> that is the game. <laughs> the game is, is one of distraction, one of forgetfulness. But it's, it's not a true distraction. It's not a true distraction. It's not a true um, forgetfulness because that, that's, that's all there is. That's all there is. There's only you. So how can you be distracted away from yourself? How can you forget yourself when there's when there's only you? Like the very essence, the very nature, the very substance or the one ingredient of forgetfulness is you. Forgetfulness is made of you. What you can do, it seems, is sort of trust that there's only you. There's a sort of faith. There's, a, there's like a true faith, a true trust that there's only, there's only me, reality. I am that one fact. 
And I'm not referring to the ego once again. I'm referring to you, reality. And I'll just give you another lovely quote by Pema Chodron. Trusting in reality is a much more open and relaxed frame of mind. Reality is going to take place one way or another. We can count on it. It is actually very profound and at the same time completely straightforward. Reality refers to things just as they are, free of hopes and fears. Knowing this to be the case, we can be open to pleasure and pain, success and failure. This is a radical approach. It goes completely against our conventional way of looking at things. We can be open to both the wanted and the unwanted. We can be open to it all. And, and in a way, we are open to it all as reality because that's what seems to be unfolding. Different shapes of reality, different experiences made of the infinite capacity of experiencing. There's just this deep faith that it's all that. So in an absolute sense, it doesn't matter how that shapes itself, as how you experience yourself. It doesn't matter ultimately in a very true sense, but of course it matters in a relative way. And of course there are different ways you can soften the blow, <laughs> let's say. Yeah, faith's an interesting one, actually. You mentioned faith. It's almost like the opposite to the ego. <laughs> it's like the ego has got no faith. It's like it's scared, essentially, and it's gripping on. A faith is a kind of just a, a total trust that all is all is well, all is taken care of, and it's like almost like the kryptonite for the ego. It's like the opposite of the ego in a sense because it's the ego can't really have faith. It has a faith on its own ter own its own terms. You know, I have faith, but I have a faith that you know I will get the car, uh, whatever. But this is like faith that no matter what. No matter what, it's okay. It's in, it's in, you know, to put it in religious terms, in God's hands. It's like there's an allowance to relax, but it's fine to let go. The ego mind wants to control everything. It wants to micromanage. It wants to try and set up life up in a way that it will have control of things at all time. And that's moved, that's totally the total opposite of faith. <laughs> it's like the ego has convinced itself it's not. It's like it's, it's become its own thing that convinces itself it's not part of reality and it doesn't trust reality. Paul Selig's guides say, the only actual problem we ever seem to face is the denial of the divine. Because there's only the divine and we just, the ego seeks to deny it. So that's the only issue really is the denial of what's true. Something that's already true. It's like finding yourself in a river and then the current is going towards like a blissful, beautiful golden ocean, but you're attempting to swim upstream against the current or something. It's like fine, denying it, <laughs> denying the river. You know, it's it's kind of like that. There's no real accurate metaphor for this, but it's sort of like that. There's a resistance of some kind. And while you really feel that you're an ego, while you feel that you're just, just this little thing, that's that's true for you. Like you are, you feel like you do need to resist. This may not all happen all at once. Like so, we offer these things. We offer like, just see what's present here now. That's a, as a pointer. I'm not saying that it will all happen at once through doing that. Like that, suddenly you will see and everything will be perfect. And you know, it's not like that. It's for me. It's incrementally coming more and more to seeing what's true, and trusting in that, and and knowing it deeply, knowing it like knowing what's true. And like you said, then you throughout the day, like that because there's a certain amount of clarity there, you don't then go off into what's untrue in the same way because you've, once you know something, you know it, don't you? Um, another Paul Selig thing uh, the guides say is what's true is always true. It's eternally true, like that you are, whatever name we give it, reality, God, the self, Brahman, Buddha mind, Dharmakaya. That is eternally true. So that's where your advantage is in these pointers we're talking about is that that exists now for you. No matter what you're going through, that already that does exist as your experience. You know, it's almost like you, you've, you've created all these, this is just a metaphor, you've created all these 
ice sculptures and they seem really hard and dense and they seem kind of permanent and distracting and heavy and you've made them out of yourself you are that you are water you're water that's all you are and that's that's all you experience you've only all you've done is you've created a load of ice sculptures everything you know is is an ice sculpture and you desire to to recognize who you are to to remember who you are you as a ice sculpture yourself and you're looking around this world of ice sculptures and you can't, why can't I see it? Why can't I see it? You know, I've been told that I am water, but why can't I see it? And it's in your very seeing. It's in the very things you see. To talk literally now, it is in your very seeing. Because what is seeing? Seeing is awareness or consciousness, whatever you want to call it. Seeing is consciousness. Seeing is to be aware. And Actually, what you see is made of seeing. The belief is that I, a separate person, am seeing separate objects. And this seeing is a result of my eyes. But really, in truth, there's only seeing, which is just another word for only awareness, which is another word for whatever you are. So, yeah, just a couple of, um, just a few quotes here to finish off. Got one here by... um, Lock Kelly, he says, ego identification is a mental pattern of consciousness that creates the feeling of a mini me. It doesn't have to be fought, repressed, extinguished, denied or killed. We don't have to become a nobody, an angel or a couch potato. Instead, when we discover awake awareness as our true nature, our ego functions can return to their natural roles and semi-retire from their second job as identity. I've heard it said that the ego is like meant to be a servant of some kind and we've taken it to be the master. I feel that's quite true. It's a lot of really beautiful creative moment, actually. It can be used to kind of write things and make things. And, you know, I think it's a servant <laughs> and we've taken it to be ourselves. Exactly. Be the fabric of reality creatively and recognize that I'm only seeing myself in, in these creations. What a beautiful opportunity in that sense. Um, and you use you use light and dark, you use up and down, you use duality for the purpose of exploration and self-expression. As Peter Brown says, the problem isn't the events, the problem is the identification. Identification is just self-creation or self-expression, the product of attention. Wherever you give attention, there's identification. And finally, Nisargadatta says just live your life as it comes but alertly watchfully allowing everything to happen as it happens doing the natural things the natural way suffering rejoicing as life brings you know you do enough of that and you recognize that all things happen it has this unthinkably balanced and harmonious outpouring of self-knowing Mm. there are lots of lots of ways of seeing this as a full knowing as a full comprehensive experience of recognition of reality of non-duality the process is very mysterious there is a lot of people out there who have had seeings of this being one inseparable whole one continuum of this same fact of life go with what feels right you have a gps system go with that that will always know best. It's going to have different ways it goes through that process, it goes through that seeing. This isn't the only way. You can use your tool set to stay with reality. Even if it's doing something which is magical beyond comprehension, if there's a strength of some kind, if you're meant to be a shaman and you're trying to be a yogi or a, a yani, it, it doesn't, there's no rules. <laughs> Go and be a shaman. Go and do ayahuasca. Go and sit in the Amazon. Like that's where you're meant to be. If that's where you feel absolutely compelled to be, then go and do that. If you're meant to be a yogi and not a yani, if you're meant to be doing some kind of hatha yoga things, do that. Maybe you're in contact with beings or deities or spirits. There's lots and lots of other ways of coming to see reality. It might be through pure meditation. 
just going into the depths of samadhi. It might be through a psychedelic experience. It might be through a transmission of some kind. I'd, reality in its functionings is mysterious. Um, there's no argument about that. Reality to itself is not mysterious, but the way reality functions, the way one comes to see themselves as reality is mysterious. So go to what feels right for you. Don't dismiss something if it feels right to you, but no one else is validating it. Know your strengths and use your strengths to your advantage in the best ways that you can.